So, Mark, did you see that NFL jackpot that recently hit $1.7 million? The guy who took the picture just strolled into the casino and saw it. I love that they use the caution tape when these things pay off. This is a wide area progressive, so usually they have to wait for the company that runs the slot machine to come and pay out everything. I don't know if you saw the update of this, did you? No. Yeah, they they said the machine tips, so they're not paying it. So another week, more progress with the Tropicana demolition. And Vital Vegas shared a video from the top of the oil parking garage. The strangest parking garage, by the way, in Vegas, because it has big concrete pillars that stick out in vertical on the top floor. But he saw the parking lot is gone. The pools are going away. You're seeing them take the exteriors of the towers out. So much has been done in the last few weeks. Who doesn't love hanging out at Oyo? So any excuse to go there, even if it's the parking garage, good times. But no, it's impressive what they're doing. But it's always easier to tear things down than it is to build them up they're progressing well here at least they have money to pay for that it's funny because scott from vital vegas he's like beating this drum that a's are never going to come he's really dying on that hill so it'll be interesting to see how this goes i don't really know either way i'm not going to pretend to understand it but before they can get everything torn down you see that picture of the big bulldozer that collapsed into the old septic tank out near the porta cache so uh big problems that's a crazy looking picture that thing went right into the ground i believe the driver was okay so nobody's hurt and uh, it'll be fun getting that thing out yeah can you imagine the smell of that like 60 year old turds just sitting in there (laughs) i mean how crazy is it to think that a vegas like casino hotel had septic before like that just blows my mind i didn't think that would be a thing so that's the that's what i found most interesting about all this the fact that anybody ran on septic back then and las vegas locally is the one who said it was a septic tank shared that photo i didn't know there was a septic tank there but i did know there was an underground because there was an entrance right across from the port of where employees would go and where those rocks were they would go down a staircase i saw them doing that on the last day i saw them doing that many times when i visited So I don't know what else is down there. And I guess one other A's related story, speaking about whether they'll come or not, there was an article in the LA Times saying that the A's got kind of a sweet deal in their uh, public funding bill, saying that if there's any new tax levied on the A's during the 30 years that they're here, they could just leave anytime they want. And apparently this isn't common. So not only did we just give them everything, we also gave them an out if we decide to change our minds later. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but they are putting in a huge chunk of money. It's not like the city's paying for all this. So I don't think anybody's going to walk away from a billion dollars that they're investing in the stadium if it gets built just to save on some taxes, but definitely gives them a big chip to play should anything come up down the line. But it just goes to show that they're still bending over backwards to bring in sports teams when, you know, it's been proven that it doesn't really pay back to the city. It's a lot of wasted money a lot of times and people just want it as to have something for the city, you know, something to be proud of. And we've been saying it since the bill passed last year when we saw it, it was giving the A's everything they wanted, so much money. Who, why did we do that? I don't know. But uh, like I said before, if it happens, the A's come, I'll support them. We'll keep an eye on the Tropicana demolition, keep you guys updated. So a lot of criticism is levied at MGM for MGM rewards and their properties. And anytime you're a big company like that, you're going to piss off a lot of people, make a lot of people happy. The truth is they have a lot of customers and I'm sure they have a lot of customers that are happy. We tend to hear sort of the negative stuff. So it's nice. They shared with me uh, a press release about the fact that they've donated 5 million meals in the community since 2016, working with Three Square Food Bank, which is a great charity in Las Vegas. Restaurant Week, if anybody's ever heard of that, that goes to Three Square, just a phenomenal charity feeding people in the Valley. And one other thing I found interesting is they're using all of their leftover you know, buffet, you know, catering, and all of that stuff and they freeze dry it they have special equipment so that they can re-prepare it and serve it as part of these meals good stuff for mgm yeah i think this is really cool and and good to know and i'm glad that they reached out to let us know about the story and it just you know i never really thought about it like we always talked about buffets were a loss leader and all the food waste and stuff and now you think about all the buffets that were taken away if you know mgm was doing this maybe some other people were doing something similar and now we lose all these buffets and the side effect is There's less food going to these shelters and stuff. So that's kind of the downside that I never even really considered. I I wish that maybe we had more buffets now so that we'd have more, uh, you know, but there's still a lot of parties and everything like that and catering events. So I'm sure they still get their fair share, but something that maybe, maybe we bring the buffets back for that. I love it. Yeah. Let's bring the buffets back, help feed everybody. Three square is great. And for anybody saying MGM, they're tooting their own horn and all that, you know, they're doing good for the community. This does help. And it's nice to see them do that. And we love to cover 
both sides of everything. So we talked about those guys' pies before on the show. I hesitated to put this back on the show, but darn, those Philly cheesesteaks look so good. Yeah, I mean, I saw this on Facebook, was scrolling through, and and some of the stuff, I know you've had the pizza, you said it's kind of like whatever, the pizza looks decent, but nothing great, but I liked all the other stuff, the Philly cheesesteak, what really stood out to me was the chicken tenders, those looked awesome, it looks like they make their own homemade batter type of thing, dipping them in there, and and they had a chicken parm made with them that I, I'd love to try. I wonder if that's pretty good. But yeah, if you've tried any of these things, let us know. I, I think all their sandwiches and stuff that they make looks way better than the pizza. So definitely want to check that out. Yeah, and they're not cheap, but they put a lot in there. So it does look like a great sandwich to fill you up. Unlike uh, the place Tony Luke's over at Rio, which I found to be quite small. And yeah, it looks great. So let us know how it is. I've had the pizza before. Thought it was pretty good, but okay. Not as good as maybe some people had said. But I do know a lot of people like their pizza as well. But those sandwiches look great, and we thought we would share. Another food-ish sort of related thing is this. I'm going to say it right, Mark, because you know we got so much shade for all of our mispronunciations for saying Vegas policy should say Nevada or Nevada instead of Nevada. <laughs> but Guy Savoie, that restaurant at Caesars Palace, they have an 1800 Madeira from Thomas Jefferson's collection. You know, Thomas Jefferson loved Madeira wine. I guess they toasted the Declaration of Independence with it. He ordered like 3,500 bottles at one point. And this is a small island off the coast of Portugal that makes this special wine. And you can see this at Guy Savoie. And it used to be at Rio, which is quite interesting. Yeah, we probably murdered that. Well, you did, because I'm not even going to try to say I it. I looked but... it up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do one of the Google searches where it like pronounces it for you and, and reads it so you know what, how you're supposed to say it? <laughs> I watched a YouTube uh, video. I knew Guy. I knew that part. I did not know the Savoie. So, you know, that was new to me. Yeah. No, this is kind of crazy when you think about it, like how long it would take on boats and stuff back then to get this amount of wine over uh, to the U.S. And, and you know, 3,500 bottles. That's that's insane. And the fact that there's still one left is pretty cool. That, what do you think is cooler? Like going to see this when you go into a restaurant or bar or seeing the gold in the Legacy Club at the top, like seeing, you know, a million dollars or whatever worth of gold? Oh, not even close. I think this would be cooler. I mean, a million dollars in gold. I, I don't know. I, that That's cool and all that. Binion's has the million dollars too. But yeah, seeing a historical thing belong to Thomas Jefferson, it's got to taste terrible though. Nobody's ever going to open this because I can't imagine it tastes good anymore. Yeah, I don't know enough about wine to to speculate on that, but you know, probably sour, who knows. It's something to check out. The crazy thing is this was at Rio before, right? So, you know, dilapidated, dumpy Rio had this historic wine. Well, it wasn't always the case. And the wine cellar there was very popular. It just reopened too. So they're doing events and uh, they're trying to get that place back and running over at Rio. That's over in the Masquerade Village. So it did have a good reputation. They also had the Voodoo Steakhouse there, which was nice and sort of high end and really well liked back in the day. So there were a lot of those types of places at Rio. A lot of people mentioned on the last show that the shirt I was wearing kind of matched the carpet at Rio. And I'm in Hawaii, so I just thought I would uh, dress like that. I can't believe neither you or I put that together. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I did make a mention of you wearing the Hawaiian shirt in Hawaii, but I didn't uh, catch it close enough. That looks like Rio carpet. So I, I guess they owe you a thanks of gratitude for you know buying the shirt that inspired the carpet. I'll make sure to let them know. The carpet matches the drape, Sean. <laughs> so as a reminder we have our new channel 20 minute travel we just did an episode where we talked about the origin story how we met and we get asked that a lot on this channel so i thought i would let everybody know i'll put a link in the description to that video it talks about sort of our history of working together our history of doing all of this it's a lot of fun and uh, we would appreciate subscribe like comment that will help us out a lot to build that channel thanks so much so last Friday was the first time Plaza did their fireworks for this new summer season that we talked about before. They're doing them every Friday at 9.15 p.m. through August 30th. And we got a great look from Legacy Club. They put up on X a video showing exactly what they look like. We talked about how Legacy Club was going to benefit from this and how the views were going to be great. And this is so neat that we're going to have this every Friday night. Yeah, I really. And I said this before. I really hope that they chipped in some for these fireworks because it's a huge selling feature for them. People standing out there having their drinks. And I'm sure Friday night reservations are going to be hard to come by throughout the summer to, to watch this show. And it looks like it's a really good show. They didn't skimp on it. Good on Plaza. I know some people hate fireworks. Definitely pets and anybody that lives in the area probably hates that this is happening every Friday night. I enjoy fireworks. I think it's really cool, especially getting it, you know, like a view that's almost eye level that's pretty unique and something you don't normally get anywhere else so outside of maybe like a baseball stadium when they shoot those off if you're in the upper deck but that's the only other time i can think that you would get this type of view yeah it's really neat great for downtown las vegas should be a fun summer down there 
So Area 15 is crazy. I mean, this place is crazy because of the mix of everything that they have going on there. They've had burlesque shows there. I think they've had stand-up comedy, all kinds of different stuff in addition to the attractions. And now they're going to have wrestling. Grap House is bringing an event there July 5th. And uh, this is apparently a, like a local sort of wrestling thing. I saw they had some events down at Ferguson's downtown. So it'll be interesting. I've never seen that sort of intimate level of wrestling. I have gone to some MMA stuff that's sort of similar in scope, you know, not UFC, but smaller local stuff. But Area 15, they're trying everything. Yeah, I think it's cool that they keep bringing in unique stuff and, and different things. And I'm trying to figure out like the space. They do have a big space when you walk in a kind of open air area, but it's still, they're going to have to move around quite a bit. Maybe that, like that little private area that you can rent. Maybe they'll put the stage there. I don't know how they'll quite fit it in, but you know, how many tickets are they going to be looking to sell and stuff? It would be kind of a cool experience because like you said, it'll be more intimate than going to like a big WWE type of thing. So you'll be close to the action. I'm sure they'll do it a little bit over the top because it's a local setup. So I'm excited to see what comes of it. And shout out to CSIM on X uh, for tagging me in so many things. He's really helped me uh, see quite a few things, including this. I would not have seen it. And uh, always cool to cover this type of stuff. Now, not cool to cover this next story, which is about mosquitoes. We've talked before about how there's more and more mosquitoes in Las Vegas. Now, I don't know if there's scientific evidence of this, but a lot of people on social media say it. I have noticed it as well. People getting bites. This was just something you never worried about in Las Vegas was mosquitoes or getting bites there. But we had our first case of West Nile virus already this year. Last year, it was detected in 43 zip codes. So I guess it happens every year, but somebody has died in the past of it. And mosquitoes, they're a pest, but they're around. So I guess stay away from standing water. I don't know a ton about mosquitoes, but I always thought they're around like swampy water stuff. So maybe like Lake Las Vegas, you would see some of these, but you wouldn't think it'd be like throughout nevada with how dry it is lake las vegas the swamp (laughs) come on on, we did we've done videos of with all the trash it sometimes it looks bad sometimes it looks great it just kind of depends remember the golf the golf video i don't know if you can bring that up from the past where around the like the hole it's just like trash everywhere uh so yeah at times it can get a little bit swampy feeling but i i wouldn't expect it like throughout all of nevada so that's kind of crazy and you know it's just like one more thing to to worry about some of it i'm sure is just like the news kind of over the top this type of thing one person died that's horrible but in the greater scheme of things of how many people that are in nevada at any given time it's a small sample size you know so is it just something that we we shouldn't worry about too much but no it's out there uh, but yeah, it's, it's something that's that's kind of scary and unexpected in Nevada, 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 Nevada. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's say it. You're off the show, Mark. <laughs> you're off the show. You start saying Nevada. <laughs> A lot of areas of the world have it worse. We don't have malaria. I agree with you. This is probably over sensationalized. For most people in southern Nevada, you get bit by a mosquito. It's going to be just a you know a nuisance. But it is something to be aware of. And uh, the Southern Nevada Health District wants you to be safe. So uh, we thought we would let you know that. So our last story is the gaming numbers. And we talked last month, gaming numbers were a little soft. And, you know, everything was still looking good compared to a few years ago, but not gangbusters like it was. And, well, April changed everything because it was great again. What was crazy is the strip had $666 million in revenue. So the devil may be active on the strip. I don't know. Sin City uh, delivering, but the state was up 6.6% to 1.2 billion. So another month, well over a billion. And we remember when a billion was a big thing, now 1.2 and everywhere was pretty much up. Downtown really having a resurgence as well. Yeah, I, you know, we thought last month, maybe this was the beginning of the the downturn that we've been expecting for like two years now. And then this comes back and, you know, huge up numbers, big time across the board, except for Laughlin. We need the scooter gangs to get out in force Get on your Amiibo, grab your pack of camels, and keep Laughlin going. We need people out there. I think they're down like 7%, so that's sad to see. But yeah, throughout like, you know, around the strip, downtown, all that stuff, way up. And it's it's surprising. I, I figured we would start seeing downturns every month. Yeah, and so that's way up year over year, by the way. Those numbers are comparing the same month last year to this year. But we also have the fiscal year to date and how that applies towards last year. And again, statewide up 4.67%, the strip up 6.52%, downtown a little bit more modest at 1.5% because they had some bad months. But overall, you know, if you're talking Las Vegas, then everything is looking really good still. 
everybody wants to say, oh, they hate it. And we see a lot of that. I think we over index on the comments of the people who are dissatisfied or remember the way it used to be and are not quite as satisfied with the way it is now. But people are coming and spending money more than ever. We say this time and time again. And that is a reality that we all have to deal with. Yeah, it's crazy that, you know, a couple of years ago, we were talking about how, you know, Vegas is shifting away from gamblers and and not really focusing on the gaming as much because more of the revenue, more of the profit is coming from all the ancillary things, you know, food, dining, clubs, booze, all that stuff. And now it's been like record after record after record, and it just keeps going up. And it's it's crazy that they're basically getting both sides of the coin now and and just, you know, everything's through the moon. And I, I don't know when it's going to downturn. I don't know. Maybe it will never. I've been waiting since like 2022 for this thing to flip. And it's just it, it keeps going up. Yeah, it's going to be over a billion. I don't think we'll ever see below a billion again. It's probably good news for the casino owners too, especially the big ones like MGM Caesars. But we also lost a casino and we're about to lose another one. We gained Fountain Blue last year, but it does seem like there's more money to go around towards everybody. But if you wonder why Hard Rock wants to spend billions of dollars redeveloping Mirage or why we may actually see a resort where the Tropicana used to be instead of a parking lot, you know, it's because there are these numbers. I mean, this is a gangbusters sort of time in Las Vegas. And while everybody's waiting for the floor to drop out, it hasn't. I don't know. I mean, obviously, the wider economy could go bad and it could go bad. But yeah, it's cool to see that. And Laughlin, yeah, what happened? I mean, that's great weather in April in Laughlin. It gets so hot in the summer. Maybe everybody was out at the beach at Harrah's or on the lake on a jet ski or something. All your uh, scooter gang out there riding on the water. Yeah, we need to we need to keep it going. I mean, it's it might be the only Mirage thing we have left, you know, the the Home Depot version when it's all said and done. Now, I, I know they already said that they're going to keep it, but it's surprising like certain areas you think it would just be up across the board. Uh, it looked like Reno was down too. So the two old school places are a little bit down, but uh, Tahoe was up. Uh, so, you know, most of it is up, but the, the two maybe older uh, leaning type places are are not doing as well. So crazy numbers. Let us know what you think. Are you still waiting for the floor to fall out? Do you think worse times are ahead? Things are finally going to catch up to Vegas with all of this nickel and diming? Or do you think things are positive and it's just going to go in the right direction? It seems like the big money is on Vegas continuing to flourish. So we will see how that goes. Let us know what you think about anything we talked about, that crazy old wine, those Philly cheesesteaks, everything happening at the Tropicana site. Leave a comment. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we'll be back in a couple days with another show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody.